Following the arrest of two men over allegations that they spied for China, the government is under pressure now to take a stronger stance against Beijing. And security services are concerned. There are several other Chinese agents operating in Westminster. Joining us now is the Business Secretary, Kemi Badenoch. We'd like to ask you in a moment about that good news from BMW. But first of all, on China, you've been the Business Secretary over the past year. Obviously, you talk to your colleagues a lot about China. Um, have you discussed China policy and the government strategy with Tom Tugendhat or Alicia Cairns, the head of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, or other Conservative members of the Conservative Research Group. Is there a risk that things that you've said to them have been passed to the Chinese over the last year? Uh, no, certainly not. There, there is no risk. And I think that uh, whatever activities that took place would have been before Tom Tugendhat was security minister. But I do think it's important to emphasize that this group which they had, the China Research Group, was not a pro-China group. This was a China skeptic, in fact, you could say anti-China group. And the fact that uh, a spy had managed to infiltrate that is extremely serious, but is not a reflection of uh, pro-China policy being pushed forward in, in Parliament. It's actually a reflection of China being concerned about uh, a lot of the scepticism that is in the UK, that is in the UK Parliament. But well, I'm not concerned were, um, about anything that I have said. But in the first six months of your time as business secretary, when Tom Tugendhat was head of the China Research Group, and it seems... No, that no the he, was, uh, he was the security minister then. He was not head of the China Research No, no, Research but before group. he was appointed security minister, while I you were business sec secretary... No, no, we, he became security minister uh, when I became trade secretary. So that the, the timelines just don't... And have you discussed any of these issues with Alicia Kearns over the last um, no. nine months? No. Right. Um, Liz Truss appointed you as the business secretary. She's been secretary. critical yes. of um, the prime minister for being too pro-China. In retrospect, was she right? Um, I don't think those criticisms are correct. The prime minister is not pro-China. The prime minister is taking very, very pragmatic steps to ensure that our relationship with China is one that uh, deals with the, you know, the, the, the epoch-defining challenge which it creates not just for us but for all countries uh, around the world. As Trade Secretary, I have to travel uh, around the world. I speak to my counterparts in many other countries. You listen to conversations we had at the trade conference at the G20 or even at the WTO. Many countries are concerned about China. They're concerned not just about spying, spying but about uh, economic coercion. They're worried about uh, the dumping of goods in their, in their economies. And we all work together to, to make those points. So given those concerns, you have negotiated Britain's um, uh, joining the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership. Yes. Australia, Japan are members. The Chinese are not members. The Chinese, though, are saying they would like to join. Yes. Will you, as Trade Secretary, veto the Chinese joining that group? Because you have the power to do so. Uh, yes, you're right. We do have the power to do so. But that's obviously not uh, news that I would be making um, just this morning uh, on breakfast television. It's a serious decision that would need to be taken with our uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership allies. And we do have those conversations. There's not much more that I can say about that. But what I would say is... So if the is Japanese before, and the Australians uh, say they don't want to veto you won't veto, uh, or to, could you decide to do it in Britain's national interest? Uh, just as uh, I said, it's not a discussion that I can have here. Every single thing which I do will be for Britain's uh, national interest, every single thing. But what we would uh, say as a group uh, in the Trans-Pacific Partnership is that all the countries would need to meet the very high standards of the group. And as you can see from the news that's come out this morning, uh, those sorts of high standards don't appear to... Uh, uh, to be yeah. met at the moment. So but that's it... something for all of the members of the CPTPP to discuss. But this is something that is very serious. Uh, the Prime Minister has himself spoken to the Chinese Premier, so I don't want to downplay the significance of this uh, incident in Parliament. But if but China we need to, look to meeting at, we need those to... standards, we... then you would be willing to do a trade it's, deal through the TPP no, it's, it's with China. It's not about committing. It's not about committing. The standards have to, to, be, to be met. It okay. took us several years to negotiate our entry into, into CPTPP. So but I'm as I said... So, so you aren't going to veto China or you're not going to veto China? 
Um, I'm not going to be making that decision on breakfast television. It's something which we have to discuss uh, okay. with security services. It's something we have to discuss at Cabinet. It's something we have to discuss with the leaders of other countries. But what I have said, which should be very, very clear and which should answer your question, is that every single thing we do will be done in Britain's interests. You can see why people are a bit confused about what the government's I, I attitude is to policy with think, China. Because if you can't tell us, it's very hard I, for us to work out what you're saying. Uh, it's quite easy for you to work out what I'm saying, Ed. I think you are being deliberately obtuse here. No, what I'm asked, saying is that what you we're doing... If you're going to veto is, a trade deal with China, and you won't and, tell us. And, well, because, first of all, we haven't even ratified our entry. How are we going to veto when we haven't ratified our entry? We need to make these decisions at the right time. And what I'm saying is that this is not the place nor the time to be discussing that. You can ask me about our relationship with China, but in terms of vetoing entry into CPTPP, no other country does this on breakfast television, and I'm not going to be doing that with you. Uh, what you can talk to us about, of course, is uh, the news that there are going to be 4,000 jobs in, uh, in Oxfordshire uh, for BMW, creating the, the next generation of electric vehicles there. Um, can I just ask you, because I think that there's been a lot of talk about uh, sort, of, um, sort of net zero policies, the ULES, sort of, that's been very controversial. This idea that um, we're going to now be going... Well, there are going to be no more diesel and petrol new cars sold in 2030. Is the government still committed to that? Because even, so the, even the head of BMW said, actually, we, this government needs to rethink that policy. Toyota have said the same thing. The silent majority in the car industry don't think that you know, electric vehicles are the way forward. Uh, so, so, first of all, um, I would say no. That is absolutely not what they're saying, and that's certainly not what they're saying to me. But let me start off by actually talking about what I'm here to talk about this morning, which is the very good news about the auto investment from BW, uh, BMW in Oxfordshire. It is the latest in a series of significant investment in our auto industry, which is facing quite a lot of headwinds. We had a £4 billion investment uh, a couple of months ago from Tata. Just last week, we had Stellantis investing in Ellesmere Port, um, millions of pounds, same with Ford, and the same with, with Toyota and Nissan. So there is a lot of good news in the industry. What they do say is that they all want to get to net zero, but they want to have certainty about what the government's policy is in order to get them there. And it is our job as government to make sure that as we transition to net zero, we don't make it difficult for people or overly expensive for people. So when the and Prime Minister the says it needs to be... And those are the things that we're, yeah. we're working on um, in Cabinet. So on the, the on the sort of 2030 a banning of the sale of, of new petrol and diesel cars, which is the mm. current policy, the Prime Minister said it needs to be pro proportionate and pragmatic. That's Michael right. Gover said that deadline is immovable. So which is it? Uh, it's what the Prime Minister has said, that we do need to be pragmatic. We are having discussions with industry right at the moment, actively looking at what we can do to make sure oh. that we help them along the way, that we That's don't make things difficult. Uh, let me finish. We don't make things difficult for consumers, but that we can still hit to the target for not just net zero, but also previous agreements that we have made, uh, the Paris agreements and, and hitting our carbon budget. Oh, well, so this is, not, this is not, um, this is not a new thing. But as things change in the wider economy, if you know, electricity costs become more expensive, as we've seen with Russia's war in Ukraine, we do have to think about what we uh, do okay. for uh, consumers and for the auto industry no, to make sure it survives. It's good to be clear on that. Yeah, absolutely, that the 2030 mm. deadline is something that is still up in the air and isn't actually immovable, as Michael Gove says. Interesting. Nothing is, the, nothing um... is no, well. Nothing is nothing is ever nothing is ever immovable. But uh, you know, certainly, government can change its mind. But mm. we are not uh, saying anything about changing our mind. We're talking about making sure that the transition, as the prime certainly. minister said, is proportionate. A quick final question, um, uh, um, uh, secretary: um, Has the Home Secretary Suella Braverman overnight announced that the government will be banning um, XL bully dogs being bred in Britain? Uh, well, she certainly wants to, to look into that. I think all of us uh, who would have seen that footage yesterday in Birmingham would have been uh, quite distraught at a breed, which I actually had never heard of until, until yesterday, uh, carrying out that sort of violent attack on multiple, on multiple people. I don't know very much about the breed, but I think it is quite right that she is looking at what needs to be done and investigating a potential ban as well. Does she have responsibility in Cabinet for this issue? Uh, as far as I'm aware, the safety of the country is the responsibility and of the citizens is the responsibility of the Home Secretary. Right. Right. Thank you so much for joining us on the programme this morning.